Those who have weird neighbors. What does your neighbor do that is weird or creepy? My old neighbor used to collect rabbit poo from her garden and put it on another's neighbor's back door step. She frequently went out without shoes on because it led to the garden. Thing is she pretended to be super nice to the other neighbor. Didn't seem deranged in any way and was in her mid late 20s. I saw this all happen from my garden and then another time she had a young daughter with her and she cackled about how she was going to kill the rabbit one day. In front of her kid. It was weird. I had a neighbor that would stand in his bushes and stare at me playing when I was 14. I tried to ask him what he's doing and he said landscaping and ran away. The same neighbor would stare at our chickens across the fence for hours. To be fair, chickens are terribly entertaining. When we moved, our neighbor was about 80-85. I spoke to him a couple times the whole time I lived there, about a decade. He's lived there pretty much his whole life. He hoarded things. His house was filled with clutter and no one in the area had really got a good look inside. The most I've seen of it is the pictures he gave us of our cat, who liked to hang out in his house. When she passed away, he had a camera obsession for a bit. He was showing a new camera off to his other neighbor, and showed her some pictures he took. Pictures he took from his bedroom window, of her garden. When she was in it, he didn't mean anything weird by it I don't think. He didn't seem to talk to many people. Didn't have a lot of family. He went into a home a few years back. Haven't heard anything since and I've moved away now. It was nice of him to give you pictures of your cat, I think. Sounds rather well meaning and sweet. Just awkward and unsocialized as well. Anytime someone goes out the front or back door he'll mysteriously have to put things in the bins or trim some plants. Then go back inside when no one is out. Same thing when car headlights come in or leave the driveway. If anyone is out in the garden he'll be exactly parallel in his garden. Not talking but just there presumably listening. He'll leave his car parked really close to the edge of his driveway that joins onto us so we can't park cars far up the driveway without fear of hitting his car with the doors. If he manages to get his hands on a package we can't sign for he'll read off any signage to try decipher what's in there and question us on it when we ask for it back. This last one is less creepy but more just awful human. One time during heavy winds we had a tree snap but hang suspended. Right at the bottom of our driveway near the road. And he parked down there right underneath where it would fall. Having never parked down there before. No clue whether this was just to cause commotion or to claim insurance but he'd not long bought the car from new so who knows. I'm pretty sure you can nail this guy legally for basically taking hostage of your packages. I used to have a neighbor that lived straight across the street from me. He would always do yard work wearing bib overalls, with one overall strap unclipped, shirtless, no shoes, chewing on a straw, no BS he dressed like Huckleberry freaking Finn. It was weird. He also would walk around in a robe and slippers all the time. He once walked past my wife from behind at a coffee shop and whispered in her ear no boots in reference to her wearing slippers instead of her boots that she wears in the winter. He had a lot of weird habits too. The list is too long to run through on here lol. Truly just a weird freaking dude. My parents have an apartment and the next door neighbors are these two guys that dress in all black and look like drug dealers. Their door is always open and they have a fan that's always on and facing the direction of the door. They are always in a hurry to get someplace. No matter the time of day, they are always sprinting. One time I was on the stairs going down, and the guy made it to me from the 5th floor in like 10 seconds. Strange enough, I was in the elevator with one of them one time, and he saw me carrying bags from Whole Foods. He then started talking about different types of healthy food that he buys from there and then he went on to complain about the US needing stronger GMO regulation lol. Every garbage night he drags the garbage cans. 4-6 of the neighboring house from the side of their house to the end of their driveway, blocking their driveway entirely. Later that night, the residents come home and drag all the trash cans out of the way and put them on the curb terrace where they are supposed to be. Then they pull into their driveway. Later that night, the same guy comes over and moves them back behind the driveway. The next morning, the residents move the cans again back to the curb so they can pull out of their driveway. I have watched this dance go on for 3 years, through 3 different sets of residents in the house. I think he's trying to be helpful, but it's just bizarre. I mean he knows they use the driveway. There was an old guy who walked his 3 goats, 
miniature horse and two dogs around the large block. Sometimes he had a parrot on his shoulder. He died a couple of years ago. I liked his animals but it was sight to see. Now we have Mr. Patriotic. He is probably like 80 years old. He rides his large tricycle around with lots of flags US, Marines, state flag and POW flag. He has long hair and wears all leather. No shirt, just his leather vest, with big gold chains. He's cool, super nice but it is interesting to see him. He usually plays loud patriotic music or country music. Not one family per se, but there is a nearby house that seems to have new people move in and out with no notice or signs of a move. There was a single mom with two kids who was replaced by a different single mom with two kids at one point. It took me a few weeks to realize they were different people. I thought she had just bought a new car instead. Then one day they were gone and now it is just some single guy living there. There is stuff on the porch and in the driveway that stayed consistent through each of these changes. Oh and during the blood moon a few years ago, one of the single moms that lived there had some friends over. And they all did a ritual in the front yard when the moon turned red. Sounds like it might be a halfway house for battered women. Maybe. Maybe they just weird. I have a bipolar neighbor who is always getting in huge fights with her boyfriend that I can overhear. Not that weird, but a week or so ago I got out of my car to her standing in the driveway bawling crying and she asked me through the tears if I had any rice. Give that woman some rice. Goes in and out of his shed all night. Stares us down every time we go outside. Stands at his front gate and gawks at what we're bringing into the house. Even tried my front door once when he was drunk and partying in his backyard. Creeper for sure. She's a horrible banshee screaming. Nosy. Drunk. Promiscuous harpy closing in on 60 that is also incredibly stupid. I could tolerate most of those trays but the stupidity is untouchable and unbearable. She calls the police on us for everything. For driving down the alley. Stealing her water. Cutting down our own trees. 10 feet into our property, while she records us, bags up roadkill and puts it on our doorstep, floods our basement when she drains her science experiment of a hot tub, screams at neighbors that walk by, has a handyman that she pays with sex, allows her dog to bark for 3 straight hours as she's gardening but runs and hides in the house when the bylaw man shows up, and yes, he sees her and you bet I called. Had her handyman demand we allow her to move the property line 3 feet into ours. When we said no thank you, her chicken wife and magically appeared on the other side of our hedge. Argued with our contractor about the property line when he tried to explain that a nail she stuck in the ground was not a property marker. So she called the cops, again. They had to call the town's inspector to explain what property markers look like and how they work. The police don't bother speaking to us anymore because they know she's a dumb dumb dummy. The hedge is gone. Our new 10 foot fence is beautiful and the envy of all the neighborhood. I have started to enjoy taking weekly pics of the property line and removing anything she nails to it. Fence is 6 inches in from the edge of our property. And so love hearing her screechy complaints that our lumber monster has blocked the sunsets. Police also called over the height. We had permission to go to 20 feet. My favorite. We live on a hill. She is on the higher side. She called to police to say we were stealing the water she was putting on her lawn. I have a diabolical relationship with gravity. I hate this dum dum dummy. Not our neighbors, but us. We have a cat named Ketchup. He likes to go outside and sometimes he's gone for days at a time. We don't know where he goes, but we call for him every night that he's gone and he eventually comes back. Anyway, our neighbors asked why we yell for condiments in the evenings sometimes. We explained that Ketchup is our cat. He goes to his other family's house, one street over where he is paradoxically named Mayo. When I was younger my family and I lived next to a family of orthodox Jews. I'm pretty sure they hated and judged us hardcore. Because the family that lived in our house before us had also been Jewish. And then we roll in like the Griswolds with our 30,000 Christmas lights and North Pole lawn ornaments. Their little girl would stare at us from her bedroom window. And smiling. Unblinking. Staring. She had these piercing green. National Geographic eyes. And you got the sense she would have tried to see straight to your soul if she thought you had one. They had a pack of tiny Pomeranians that barked day and night. And every so often one would get out and we'd have to carry the belly dog back to its owners. Who were never grateful. It was an odd couple of years. Belly dog. 
Love it. Not sure if this counts since it's my landlady and not my neighbor. She's super religious and will walk around the house chanting in some language I'm not familiar with all hours of the day. Also every Sunday she'll be right on the other side of my bedroom door whispering some blessing about Jesus blood cleansing the walls of this house. Was definitely a terrifying sound to wake up to. I'm definitely the weird neighbor. I swim with my dog almost every day. I stay up really late and go on lots of midnight or later night walks. I'm also antisocial and try to avoid them as much as possible. My neighbors sometimes bang on the wall in the middle of the night. Luckily it doesn't tend to bother me too much because I'm generally still awake playing the drums. Me, my boyfriend and his housemates, his best mate and the partner, live in a half block. So this lovely lady, let's call her Jan, lives in the front house. We live behind her house and there is a fenced off driveway for us to get to our house. We own two dogs and one is a very young, lively Vizsla. She has an obsession with him. I constantly catch Jan peering over the fence to check on him as she thinks we don't treat him right. He is our baby who we dedicate our lives to lol. I will regularly find new toys, meaty bones, tennis balls etc on our property that is definitely not from us. She constantly questions us on our dog's diet, if he gets fed enough, if he's cold outside. If he's getting enough treats and she even gifted him her dead dog's jumper. Now our dog uses this against Jan and we recently got a call saying our dog escaped but she reassured us that it's okay and she will look after him for the day. I don't know what she did but I've never seen my dog bolt so fast out of a room. All in all lovely lady, although weirdly obsessed with my dog. I feel like she's going to steal your dog lol. The neighbor that lives behind my house mows his grass. Probably more than usual. It doesn't sound too bad. Except yesterday we've had a big, pretty much day long thunderstorm in the area. And the idiot's trying to start his now half submerged mower that's sitting in a low lying section of his yard where a big puddle's already formed. He just managed to get it going again this morning. And I'm just standing there watching him wreck his backyard further with grass clippings. Mud and tire tracks everywhere. On days when it's not raining. Doesn't matter what season it is either. He spends about 3 hours with his gas powered blower, and just meanders around his house, revving it randomly at times, not even blowing the leaves or anything. By then he's already pee off a few other neighbors who has bad allergies. Come the time when pollen's in the air. He's also got a rather expensive looking boat parked in the driveway as well. And of all the people in my neighborhood, he's the only one, almost every other weekend. Climbs up into the boat and starts its engines. And just lets them run for 1-2 hours and shuts them off. Now I'm no expert. But he's got two big Honda outboard motors. And as far as I was told, running them out of the water isn't a really good idea. So someone can correct me on that. But one weekend, he started them, left them running, and apparently forgot about them and went inside. I was chilling in the living room and I hear a rather loud boom. Look outside and I just see black smoke pouring from one of the motors and the dumbass is just standing there, scratching his head. It took both another neighbor and me come running and shouting to shut it off before he did any more damage. As far as things go, he's never gotten that outboard motor fixed, and throughout the summer, I've seen him and his family take it out on trips. Wonder how that goes. His whole family though, is another long story. My parents have a neighbor who mows the grass several times a week, either with the mower or tidying up the edges with a trimmer, comes home from work, changes into casual clothes and goes mowing for hours. It's not that big of a yard, we're 99% sure he does it to get away from the wife and kids. They've always been quite shy, they never let on, they don't accept your post if you're not in but they will expect you to take theirs in. Their house is falling apart, front and back garden are a mess and they've got rats. All of a sudden they've got money and bought two new cars each. They still haven't done anything to make their house look neater but hey it's their money. But what makes them weird is, they've only ever driven the cars to park them by my house. They go out multiple times a day and just sit in their cars. They never, ever move. If they see me go to my car they will try to slide down and hide in their seat. If they actually go out anywhere they use public transport. The cars are all legal and insured to use. They just don't drive them. I leave for work at around 6am. Most days my neighbor is in his truck. 
with it running, drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette and reading the newspaper, I had to ask. He's a single dad with two teenage kids. He likes to get up early and read the paper but doesn't want to disturb the kids. It's a 1600 SQFT house with a master bedroom and two living rooms and he can't find a place quite enough to read the paper. I'm trying not to judge the 6am beer either. If you hadn't asked I would have assumed he worked third shift. I can't count the number of oddball stares I got as I was in my backyard grilling burgers and drinking beer at 7am when I work nights. One time I got to see our neighbor running around shirtless screaming boogie woogie trying to herd a bunch of chickens. Well first off, the lady told us to call her and her husband the hamburgers. Still not sure if that's their actual last name or what. The husband is the grumpiest dude I've ever looked at. He has never spoken a word to anyone in my family. Just glares at us if he's ever out when we are nearly 8 years later. The lady rummages through our trash and recycling. I think she collects things either to sell for cents. I'm not even sure that's available where I live. But she goes around the neighborhood collecting who knows what out of people's bins. I've gotten very paranoid about the things information that ends up in my garbage. I have a neighbor that has 30 plus cats. 30 plus because I counted sets of eyes at night once but that was like a year ago and I've seen at least 5 litters since then. On one hand it's cool because you see kittens just wandering around sometimes. On the other hand every hot, moist day you can actually smell her house. We've tried knocking on her door when her cat gives birth in someone else's yard but she never answers and turns off all the lights in her house. New neighbors moved in recently and I don't think they're haven at tbh. TL. DR. I live two doors down from a classic crazy cat lady. My neighbors insist on being in their bedroom and bathroom with the curtains open whenever we are out in our backyard. We have a pool so that means we are outside a lot. Our friends even have a running joke asking us if they can come to our backyard pee theater because this has happened so many times. Nothing like feeling like a perv in your own backyard. Mine was at our last house. Kind of the one where I grew up. Our neighbor Ernie was Native American, and he would just randomly get wasted and have big bonfires in the middle of the night and dance and sing. Like, big butt country style bonfires with pallets and chairs and crap. The cops would always come and have him put it out. His hillbilly wife, god rest her soul, would just kinda stand by the door and watch and sometimes yell. We would even hop the fence and join him sometimes. Everybody on the block could tell when he was at it. It was great. Nicest people, though. He found out that my family is part Navajo and would start coming over all the time to visit with his cousins, as he called us. Went back a year ago because now my cousin lives there. Ernie runs out pretty much as soon as I was out the car with the cousin. You grew up. How's school? Invited me to a bonfire to celebrate. He did his dancing and singing again. Even said it was an official powwow since I was grown and have my hair long for cultural reasons. He's weird as all heck, but everybody loves it. A former neighbor who shared a stairway to our adjacent upstairs apartments was a lady who always wore a navy blue trench coat. In Houston, where daytime temps easily reach 90 degrees between May and October, my family's nickname for her was the Flasher. I have a really weird neighbor who just moved in a few months ago. It's a guy in his 30s who I'm almost positive sells C as a full time job. And my neighborhood is a sort of nicer one which is why this is especially off. But this dude is whack. Firstly he has a constant flow of visitors who are completely strung out and often shout at him for taking too long. He also has an RC car that he stands in the street and drives around for hours at a time, often around 2am. For the past 3 weeks he's had one of those rentable Penske trucks in his driveway all day, every day. Nobody sees him going in or out of it. Yesterday the truck was finally gone and there was furniture all over his yard and driveway. He does not close his garage, ever. I thought the stereotype was that C is a rich man's drug, which would make the upscale neighborhood thing make sense. Upper 60s. Has had a couple strokes. Still hobbles around. Loiters at the end of my driveway every morning when he knows I'll leave for work and tries to engage me in yet another that sucker. Trump rant. Creeps. Yep. Around my front and backyard. When asked he says he's just checking. Won't elaborate on what. Disappeared for a month and came back with a young. Looks 16. Claims she's 22. Bride from Thailand. 
For a while it seemed like she was pretty much being held captive, but the power dynamic has shifted of late. About 4 of her, alleged, family members have moved in. According to my much more observant GF she's romantically involved with one of the dudes she's passing off as her brother. I think the oldie dude is getting a bit suspicious though. We're expecting a dramatic explosion any week now. TL. DR. Pretty crazy people. Had 7-8 children removed for neglect. Hermits who only go outside late at night early in the morning. Well they're not my neighbors anymore. But when I lived with my mom, our neighbors stayed indoor at all times. Never made contact to any of the other people living on the street. It's a closed off street. And everyone says hi and waves to each other. They have a big bus parked in front of their house. To make sure no one can see through their windows. And those not covered by the bus are always blinded off. They only come out in the night very early morning. To sweep their property. And they always wear boiler suits. If they see you outside. They go behind the bus and wait for you to disappear behind the bus. Once. My sisters accidentally kicked a ball into their front yard, which is not behind a fence, and is just pebbles all the way to the front door. My sisters went to retrieve it, and they came rushing out the door with a video camera, yelling at them to get off their property. I have also been told that they once threatened some kids by the road, with a shotgun, because they were having fun with some fireworks. Also, they are known to have child and without the state knowing so, and have gotten 7-8 kids removed forcefully for neglect some were a couple of years old and had never been registered or even had a social security number the police searched the house a couple of years ago and found a two three year old kid hiding in the garage oh and they have a website where they have posted a lengthy report of the things me and my family do and how we're harassing them i once spoke to a local newspaper about them said no harmful things just that they wore boiler suits if you ever saw them but I didn't have any bad feelings towards them. They then wrote on their website maybe you shouldn't speak about what we're wearing. Spill a manon, But instead worry about how us your mother dresses. Not creepy. But wholesome weird. Growing up. I used to live a few lots away from a senior living trailer park. It was solid middle class and generally housed elderly people with modest pension plans. Think manicured lawns. White picket fences. Perfectly trimmed gardens etc. There was one trailer whose yard was home to a gigantic monkey tree. It was about 30 feet tall. Here's the weird part. They had stuffed monkeys all over the tree. I used to walk by it on my home from school every day as a kid. There were about 20-25 stuffed monkeys up this tree. And about weekly, the elderly couple that lived there would change the monkeys clothing. This was on BC's west coast so winter held a lot of rain. They'd dress each monkey up with tiny raincoats, umbrellas, galoshes, the whole thing. Every monkey had a style, preppy, punk, hippie, etc. Each week they'd change the monkey's gear to something entirely new, but still within the monkey's style. In the summer they'd dress them up in swim trunks, summer dresses, baseball caps, etc. The elderly couple used to wave at me when I stopped to ogle their tree. I think they got genuine pleasure from entertaining a young kid with it all. They've long since passed away, but whoever bought the property still upkeeps the honorable monkey tree and its inhabitants. Has body bags leaving her house in the middle of the night? Leaving used needles outside on the sidewalk where neighborhood kids play. Setting her car alarm off in the middle of the night randomly caused she is all cracked out. I'm picturing body bags with a hat and briefcase leaving the house. Waits for me to come home and says hi out of his window. The window faces my driveway and is about 10 feet higher than my driveway. It's always dark in the room so all I hear is his voice. It scares me almost every time. Sometimes he will try to have conversations and it's me basically talking to a wall since I can't see him. Oh, and all the drugs. That makes him a bit weird at times. I have posted this before, but they have always been super rude to us. We barely speak to them. They bought dummy cameras and pointed them at our house. My mom also walked into the garage one day to do laundry and found our neighbor snooping through our stuff. I was so thankful that they moved. We have a surveillance camera and caught my 80 year old neighbor wandering into our backyard and stealing an empty beer can and an empty beer bottle. Where I live you can get about 20 cents for those. He's also wandered into our backyard with no shirt on. 
OHH I am late to this but I have a good one. Lived in a small condo like apartment complex. 8 apartments. Had one open designated parking space to park our cars per each apartment. Some unassigned open parking spaces further away. Next door neighbor to me are Chinese nationals have a son who speaks great English and is the same age as my little sister and friends with her. The mother and father would communicate through him. Anyway, this woman could not drive. Her space was right next to mine and it was a nightmare watching her try to park. She luckily never hit my car but within a week of her moving in and trying to park daily I moved my car farther away in the lot. Cause the last time she tried to park she was halfway behind my car and sideways and halfway in her space and I had to ask the father to move it through the sun. Not the weirdest part though. I am in western New York so come winter we get a lot of snow. Every single time I tea snowed she would grab the largest butcher knife I have seen to date and just go out and stab the snow off her car. Not slide it off the car lengthwise with the blade but stab up and down like she was trying to murder her car. Just stab the crap out of it. This was years ago around when we had the October storm. This crazy person was out there in that storm. Trees and crap falling over all around her. For hours just stabbing her car. Always stabbed her car when it snowed and always out there for hours at a time stabbing away every time. It has no job. Pays his bills. Always has a van full of random crap he's trying to offload. Allegedly Craigless finds. Always wearing different safety vests and things like lineman jumpsuits when he pulls up. 98% sure he is a burglar. I'd assume you're right. But if it turns out he is not a burglar. He sounds like a really interesting guy. The one time I talked to her she let me know that her ex was a piece of crap because he raised a hand to me once. She was extremely unpleasant and angry at life. Her 4-5 year old kid was still in diapers and had bruises and welts on his arms and legs from where she beat him. I saw her hit the boy with a fiberglass rod. People use them to outline their driveway for snowplow drivers. The cop I talked to was very uninterested and played off the abuse like it was discipline. There's a difference between discipline and beating a 4 year old because you hate your life. My other neighbor who had lived there longer would get a couple beers in him and say he wanted to kill her for things he'd seen her do to that boy. I live in an old two story brick apartment building which is approximately 10 feet from the wall of the next two story brick apartment building. At one time, each flat was two stories with the main doors facing out to the street and patio doors facing into the space between the buildings where there was a small common space. At some point the owners realized they could rent twice as many units by knocking out the stairs and renting the basement floors as new units. That's where I live. Since all of us basement dwellers have our doors and windows pointed at each other and into a brick walled sound amplifying space from heck, we are generally pretty respectful about noise and privacy, especially when it's hot and every has their windows open. Aside from the occasional drunken karaoke night from one of my neighbors, always on a weekend night, so meh, live and let live, things are good, there is a small privacy fence. Slatted to let lie through between the basement units, and my neighbors directly across, two or three guys, hard to tell, put a small table on their side of the fence since they're smokers. No big deal. Here's where it gets creepy. So, when my boyfriend comes over, I shut the windows and close the shades because privacy. It's been hot lately, and one night a few weeks ago I got out of bed to open my windows back up because my apartment was boiling hot and realized I forgot to close one of my windows. I could also very clearly hear one of my neighbors sitting at that table beating off. Now, I heard it, but I thought, hey, maybe I'm being paranoid and that's not what's going on. Then one of the other guys comes out of the apartment and tells off the masturbating guy. Not for masturbating, but for not texting the others. Apparently they have some kind of bro deal about this, and shutting my windows didn't block as much sound as I hoped, which he violated. Speaking of violated, I still have no idea what to do about this aside from turning on loud music during sexy times with my boyfriend. My neighbors and I share a wall in an app building. They grunt. At all times of the day. This weird, guttural, grunt. I don't know how else to describe it, but it is freaking terrible, and I don't feel safe from it at any time of day. I had a neighbor when I was in high school who weirded us out. She came across as a snobby old bee but her husband was nice and friendly. She would never even acknowledge our existence. Look our direction. 
nothing. Well one day I had to be at school early for football practice and I walk out and she's standing in our driveway in her underwear and a robe holding a shovel. I'm like ah ma'am, what are you doing? She said our dog's having been crapping in her yard and she's sick of it and then dumps a shovel load of crap in our driveway and walks back inside her house. I was completely dumbfounded. We haven't had dogs in over a year. My wife and I used to live in a small block of flats. Six flats, three floors, two on either side of the building all connected by a common stairwell, or close if you're from Scotland. If you were looking at the building, we lived in the top left flat. The other flats were full of weirdos. There's the couple we shared a floor with, a Chinese couple who didn't speak much English, always fought but were always together. They only spoke Chinese. I don't know if Mandarin or whatever to each other but if they saw you, they'd stop talking and just watch you, as if they didn't want their conversation to be heard, even though we couldn't understand them anyway. Then there's the two flats in the middle floor. One was an old guy that lived alone and directly below us. Strange guy, would watch people coming and going out his window and every so often in the middle of the day you'd hear him moaning. Weird but maybe a health issue, maybe he's in pain, whatever. The couple across from him, now they were two junkies, drug addicts, he was abusive to her, physically. Weird thing is we didn't know they were there until about 6 months after we moved in. Saw no one coming or going, heard nothing, then everything started. She once, off her face on something, came to my door with a black eye wanting me to roll a joint for her. I told her no one closed the door. Then she tries the handle and started banging on it. That was the first time we called the police on that couple. Lots of stuff on them. Also we figured out the old guy's moaning. She was prostituting herself to him for more money for drugs. So that moaning was him getting off. EWW. And then the mother and son who lived on the ground floor on our side. She was old and he was about 40-50. Didn't really talk to them. One or both seemed to be hoarders though. Then after a year or so we noticed a lot of flies and bugs around the flat. Like a lot. One day we had a police officer at our door saying there's a body in the stairwell and we should probably stay in until it's gone. Turns out the son had heart attack and died. A while later we discovered his death and the insects were related. We had assumed he had just died that day. Oh no 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 dear reader. He had died in his sleep. Weeks if not months before. And the flies were due to his rotting corpse. I think his mother discovered him and just couldn't come to terms with it. She temporarily moved out. The whole place was gutted and hazmat crews came in to clean the place. Then she moved back in by herself. We moved out of there 3 years ago and haven't looked back. My upstairs neighbors are loud at strange times of the day. For example, they'll blast crappy pop music at 10am on Tuesday, stand on the second floor landing. My landing. They live on the third and complain about the buses being late at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, then have loud sex at 8.30 a.m. on Thursday, then they will immediately get into a fight right after sex. It's loud enough for me to know what exactly they're fighting about and where they go in their apartment to sulk. Also, the woman, s, orgasms are absolutely faked. One time, in the middle of making stereotypical P movie moans, she literally just screamed, out of nowhere. It sounded like a spider fell on her face or something. It was not natural or sexy. It was a poorly executed attempt at pretend sex. Your neighbors sound just like mine. Except the orgasm sounds sound like a demented sea lion. This was a long time ago. I was living in an up and coming punk house. We took second for weird neighbors. There was this special needs kid on our block named Jimmy. I think he had some sort of all American 1950s name. Anyway he was 12ish and cool as frick. He always talked about hiding in trash cans so he could scare the garbage men and otherwise goofy crap that we would inevitably talk him down from. He had a crush on one of our housemates. It was adorable. He would always come over when we were drinking on the porch, which was often. So it came as a surprise when one day he started talking about his stepbrothers and how they were mean to him. He never mentioned them before. Apparently they rarely came over. But they were horrible to him as he told us. Isaac and Malachi were their names. We didn't believe him. No freaking way. Figured he had just watched the movie or something. 
Shortly thereafter two gangly boys with sunken eyes come walking down the block and start yelling at Jimmy didn't mama tell you not to come over here, she said they's the devil, get home now. We tried talking to them, but they wouldn't make eye contact. I told Jimmy we would see him later, but he never came back. I saw him around the neighborhood, but never talked to him again. We moved out shortly after that due to spit ejection in the basement. My downstairs neighbor once called me and asked me to go to the kitchen and stomp a little bit because he was flipping pancakes and one got stuck to the ceiling. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.